G'day guys, we've got a calculus question for you today, which we've been given the line 19x minus 2y minus 32 equals 0, and we're told that it's tangent to the curve y equals px cubed plus qx at the point 2 comma 3. We're asked to determine the values of p and q. So to start with guys, I think the most important thing to get from this video is to understand the properties of tangent lines. So let's just go through them right now. Okay, so the first property that's going to be useful for us in this question is they've got to pass through the same point. Cool. And the second property which is going to be useful for this question is at this point, the gradients must be equal. Cool. So the first thing we're going to do, guys, is with this linear function here, we're going to appreciate that a linear function has the same gradient regardless of where you are along its course. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert this linear function here which is in general form into mx plus c or intercept form so we can just easily see what the gradient is going to be. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the 2y across to the other side and we have 2y is equal to 19x minus 32. I'm going to divide both sides by 2, so I have y is equal to 19 on 2, x minus 16. So from here, guys, we can ascertain the gradient, or m, is equal to 19 on 2. Okay, so the next part of this question is probably the hardest part, guys. What we've got here is we've got a cubic function with two unknowns, p and q. So what we're going to need to do to solve for those two unknowns is we're going to come up with two functions and use simultaneous equations to solve them. Okay, so let's have a go at doing that. Our first equation is we're going to utilise the fact that this cubic function goes through the point 2, comma 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute these two numbers into our function. So, rather than having y equals px cubed plus qx, we're going to have 3 is equal to p times 2 cubed plus q times 2. Or, 3 equals 8p plus 2q. Great. And the next part, guys, is we're going to use the, this second point here, that at the tangent point, 2, comma 3, the gradients of both functions must be equal. So what we're going to do is we're going to use calculus, and this is where the applications of calculus comes in, to differentiate this function here to get the gradient function, or the derivative, and we're going to sub in x equals 2 and make it equal to this gradient here, because they have to be equal to each other. So, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to appreciate that dy dx evaluated when x is equal to 2, guys, is going to have to be 19 on 2. Same as this one here, because they have to be equal. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the derivative of this function. So dy dx is equal to 3px squared plus q. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in all the um, things that I know. And I get 19 over 2, because I know that's what my gradient's got to be, is equal to 3p and x is 2 squared plus q. So what we end up with is 19 on 2, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12, p plus q. To make it easier to figure out in the end, I'm going to multiply both sides by q, and I get 19 equals 24p plus 2q. Cool. 
Okay guys, so now I've got two equations with two unknowns. I can use simultaneous equations to solve them. So my first equation is here, and my second one is here. Now hopefully you guys will realize that we see how we've got 2q and 2q in both equations. What I'm going to do is here, I'm going to rearrange both of these so they're q in terms of p. So the first one is going to be equal to 2q is equal to 3 minus 8p. And my second one is going to be equal to 2q is equal to 19 minus 24p. Great. So now because they're both equal to 2q, I can make them equal to each other. So I can say that 3 minus 8p is equal to 19 minus 24p. I can then take the p's to one side and the numbers to the other. I'm going to take the p's to the left and the numbers to the right. So negative 8 plus 24 is 16p. And then I have 19 minus 3 is 16. So p is equal to 1. Great, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute p equals 1 into either of these equations. This one here looks easier. So I'm going to go 3 is equal to 8 times 1 plus 2q. I'm going to say 3 equals 8 plus 2q. Take the 8 over the other side, negative 5 equals 2q, so q is equal to negative 5 on 2. So then what we do guys is we just write our final statement to make sure the guys know what we've done. So we say therefore p is equal to 1 and q is equal to negative 5 divided by 2. Okay guys, so just a quick recap on what we've done. First of all, we came up with the properties of tangent lines that we were going to need to solve this problem. The first one being that the two lines have to pass through the same point, x, y. So on Cartesian coordinates, they do need to cross paths like this. And that at this point where they cross paths, the gradient of both functions must be the same or must be equal. So those are the two things that we have to check off to make sure that these are tangent lines. And we can use these properties to derive our simultaneous equations that we're going to use to solve because we have two unknowns in one of our functions. So what we did first, guys, is this linear function, we converted it from general form to intercept form or mx plus c form. So we could then determine what the actual gradient was of the linear function. What we then did, guys, is we used the first point or the first property to come up with a equation that linked P and Q together. We just used this point here, 2 comma 3, the fact that both lines had to go through this point. So we subbed in 2 and 3 into the second equation and got this. The second thing was we realized that the derivative of this function at the point x equals 2 has to be the same as the gradient of our linear function. So we used this here, which is simply point 2, this one here, to derive another equation that linked q and p. Once we had those two, we then just used simultaneous equations and the methods to solve them. In this case, I just used elimination by setting both equations equal to 2q. I was able to eliminate q and then solve for p then use P to solve for Q, and then we get our solutions. So it's not much of a hard question, guys. It's just knowing how to utilize these properties of tangent lines to be able to get all the way through a problem like this. But mainly, most of these problems are the same sort of method. You have to go through the finding the gradient of the linear function and then finding two formulas for the second function. Sometimes if they have three unknowns, which becomes a bit of a pain in the ass, you'll have three formulas but they'll give you extra information in the question, obviously. 
So guys, the only way to get through questions like this is to keep practicing, 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 keep banging your head against the wall. I say this almost every video until that wall actually falls down. But most of all, guys, just as you're practicing, make sure you're enjoying your maths. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel. I'm only a new channel, so, you know, every subscriber helps. And until next time, guys, I'll see you, see you soon.